This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Republican state senators vote today to override as many as 36 of Governor Evers' vetoes, including a bill to fight PFAS pollution. At the same time, Evers is countersuing the Republican-controlled legislature to release $50 million for a new school literacy program. Each side is accusing the other of obstruction. Liberal justices on the Wisconsin Supreme Court sound inclined to reopen unstaffed absentee ballot drop boxes. During oral arguments yesterday, Rebecca Dallet said there's nothing in the law banning drop boxes. We operate in the law with a general concept when the legislature writes a statute that things are permitted unless they're forbidden. Conservative Justice Rebecca Bradley argued absentee voting is not protected by law. The law in the state of Wisconsin is that there is a right to vote, but there is not a right to vote absentee. That is a privilege that was granted um, legislatively. The August primary is three months away, and the November general election is six months off. Federal investigators are looking into a small community in northwest Wisconsin for a possible violation of the Voting Rights Act. The town of Thornapple near Ladysmith switched to all paper ballots last year, Federal law requires at least one machine for voters with disabilities. A complaint has been filed with the Wisconsin Elections Commission. A health care system serving eastern Wisconsin is working with the FBI to try to unfreeze their computers. Ascension Health officials confirmed last week a ransomware attack has frozen their computer system. Ascension isn't saying how much money the hackers want. Fewer people are signing up to serve in the military in Wisconsin. The Wisconsin Army National Guard is operating at 90% strength, which is considered low. Data shows a sharp drop in new recruits in the last 20 years. Only about half as many people signed up to serve last year compared to 2004. People in Wisconsin are learning about large-scale renewable energy projects thanks to a million-dollar grant to the University of Wisconsin-Madison Extension. The UW's Sherry Gruder says one goal is helping landowners negotiate with developers. Not all farmers are going to spend three to five hundred dollars an hour to talk with an attorney, but we could help educate them on that type of thing. Gruder says they'll also use listening sessions to bust myths about renewable energy. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The names of three Northwest Wisconsin police officers who were killed in the line of duty were added to a memorial wall in Washington, D.C. Chatech Police Officer Emily Breidenbach, Cameron Police Officer Hunter Scheel, and Wisconsin Deputy Caitlin Lysing's names were unveiled on the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial on Monday morning. Officers Breidenbach and Scheel were killed during a traffic stop in Barron County last year, and Deputy Lysing was killed in a roadside shooting a few weeks later. There's a new professional sports team coming to Eau Claire. According to a WQOW report, Eau Claire has been selected as the next expansion franchise for the Arena League. The Football League now includes teams in Duluth, Iowa, Missouri, and Arkansas, with Eau Claire as the sixth team to join the league. Eau Claire's team and the Hot Springs Arkansas team will not participate in this year's season, but are scheduled to begin play in 2025. Eau Claire was selected over Rochester, Minnesota, Dallas, Texas, and St. Joseph, Missouri. Republican state senators announced attempts to override vetoes on five bills on Monday, including the line-item vetoes made by Governor Tony Evers on $15 million in funding for emergency departments in Chippewa and Eau Claire counties. State Senators Jesse James, Pat Teston, and Romaine Quinn argued the vetoes expanded the scope and intent of the emergency funding, which is currently sitting in the Republican-controlled Joint Finance Committee. Governor Evers filed a lawsuit to release the funding yesterday. The Wisconsin Department of Health Services has responded to Eau Claire City Attorney Stephen Nick's request for an investigation into HSHS. In their response, DHS advised the city attorney that they would not be able to open an investigation, saying they can't investigate the behavior or decision-making of a hospital's CEO without allegations that the CEO's actions violated the Medicare conditions of participation. Nick had asked DHS to investigate if HSHS had met and continues to meet its license obligations. 
The YMCA of the Chippewa Valley is holding a clothing drive until this Friday to benefit the Eau Claire Area School District Closet and the Homeless Program. According to a press release, the Eau Claire Downtown YMCA will be accepting new clothing and hygiene product donations. Officials say there is an urgent need for new socks and underwear for all sizes, as well as a variety of hygiene products like toothbrushes, deodorant, and laundry detergent. Donations can be dropped off at entrance D of the Graham Avenue location. North Lakes Community Clinic has announced it plans to open another clinic in Augusta later this year. The news comes just a few days after the healthcare organization opened a new clinic on West Claremont Avenue in Eau Claire. According to a press release, the clinic will be their 20th location and officials are hoping it will be open by late October. They say their expanded footprint in the area is a direct result of community members asking for help in the wake of the departure of HSHS and Prevea from the region. Congressman Derek Van Orden was in Eau Claire last week to host a roundtable discussion on the health care situation in the Chippewa Valley. The roundtable included elected officials and representatives from Oak Leaf, Mayo, and Marshfield and covered issues like a lack of available psychiatric beds and the $15 million of emergency funding that is currently held up by the state legislature's Joint Finance Committee. Congressman Van Orden plans to introduce a bill to extend telehealth services for qualified health centers. A Russ County town has the attention of election officials after voting to remove electronic voting machines. According to a Milwaukee Journal Sentinel report, the town of Thornapple voted to rely solely on counting paper ballots by hand last year. Russ County Democratic Party Chairwoman Erin Webster claims that in a recorded call, town supervisor Jack Zupon cited claims that the 2020 election was stolen as the reason for the removal of the machines. Federal law requires at least one machine for voters with disabilities. And that's what you need to know. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The Brewers lose to the Pirates. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports. The Pirates chipped away through nine innings to win eight to six. Pittsburgh's Brian Reynolds went five for five with a pair of singles, two doubles, and then connected on a home run. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, that's pretty cool. Just had good uh, self-talk in the box to myself and got some pitches to it. Brewers first baseman Reese Hoskins suffering a hamstring injury running the bases. He's undergoing an MRI. Brewers manager Pat Murphy. Reese's injury, obviously he's got a hamstring. Um, we don't know anything more. I have an MRI in the morning. You know, to use one, lose one of our leaders. We just got Yelly back. Um, that's a big blow. Usually hamstrings are not better in a few days. You know, yeah. Elsewhere, the Cubs lost to the Braves in Atlanta. The final score, 2 to nothing. NBA, Thanasis Antetokounmpo underwent surgery to repair a torn Achilles. He suffered during workouts last week in training. Doctors say the procedure went fine, but the 31-year-old expected to miss the upcoming season. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Actor Jeff Daniels credits rubber-faced fartsmith Jim Carrey for keeping him in show business, adding that if it weren't for Carrey, the hit Netflix show A Man in Full would never have seen the light of day. After completing Dumb and Dumber 2, Daniels told his pal Carrey, I'm done. Carrey convinced Daniels he still had lots to offer in terms of creativity. Since then, Daniels says he is happy he stayed the course and says he knew he finally made it in show business when his agent asked him, what do you want to do? An agent working for a client. Imagine that. The Connors will say goodbye after this season. It's seventh. The Roseanne reboot launched in 2018 with its namesake star Roseanne in the lead role until she went on a controversial social media rant. Her character was immediately killed off of her own show. The New York Post reports that ABC says there has not been a release date yet for season seven. The Connors achieved TV history in season six when it reached its 100th episode without anyone knowing it was on TV. Ed Harris will direct a script he adapted called The Plowman from the novel of the same name. Variety reports that Harris will direct a cast consisting of Owen McTeague, current star of The Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, Bill Murray, and Nick Nolte. The film is described as a neo-noir crime thriller. This is Harris's third time behind the camera, and production will start this coming fall in Montana. Neo-noirs aren't typically box office darlings, but man, are they cool. If you thought you didn't like Yellowstone before, just wait till they put out a new show based on the Rip and Beth characters. Cole Hauser, who plays Rip, hinted during a recent interview with Country Living that show creator Taylor Sheridan might have a spinoff in the works. The rumors give avid fans something to look forward to, as Yellowstone will most likely end this fall. There are also rumors that Matthew McConaughey will star in a Yellowstone spinoff. Probably should have opened with that. The Kingdom Rules, the latest installment of the Planet of the Apes franchise called The Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, was number one at the domestic box office this past weekend, taking in almost 59 million bucks. The opening haul is good for third overall so far this year after Dune 2 and Godzilla x Kong. The Fall Guy came in a distant second with a little over 13 million. The critically acclaimed Zendaya film Challengers took third. 
Rounding out the top five are the low-budget horror film Taro, which came in fourth place, and the aforementioned Godzilla X Kong. According to Variety, cinema prognosticators are semi-encouraged about the strong opening of the apes. The box office is still down about 40% from pre-pandemic 2019 and almost 20% from last year. Theater owners and studios are keeping their fingers crossed that the upcoming films Mad Max, Deadpool, and Inside Out 2 will rally the summer box office take. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba. Weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Mostly sunny today with a high right around 70 this afternoon. The wind will be from the northeast at 5 to 15. Tonight, clear 45. Tomorrow, partly cloudy 70 with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms likely tomorrow night right on through Thursday. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Currently, it's 51. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at wcfw.fm or thetap.fm.